Today, Christoph Bauer is going for a spin in a very special VW Beetle, at the time considered the Volkswagen for high society. It's a Rometsch Bisco. At one time, it was common practice to buy just a drivable chassis from a car maker and then have the body custom made. Christoph explains that before World War II, Rometsch mainly built taxis on Opel chassis. During the war, the company had to concentrate on producing field kitchens. It was only in the 1950s that it was able to return to its area of expertise and started building exclusive convertibles and four-door taxis out of the still-new VW Beetle. Rometsch designer Johannes Bisco began tinkering with a special body of his own. The result so impressed the boss that he took it into volume production. Rometsch became one of the first coach builders to mass produce a special edition vehicle. With its low cost and robust engineering, the Beetle provided the ideal platform. It touched off a veritable do-it-yourself boom among coach builders. Porsche utilized technology from VW for its first mass-produced 356s. Hebmüller and Beutler build cars virtually of their own design on Beetle chassis, and VW eventually itself followed suit with a luxury coupe in the shape of the Carmen Ghia. Christoph recalls how the Rometsch Special Sports Convertible was unveiled at the German Automobile Exhibition in Berlin in 1950, where the public crowded around to see it. Hollywood stars like Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck were among those who added the luxury VWs from Berlin to their collections. With sales booming, Rometsch opened showrooms in Munich, Zurich, Ottawa, Stockholm, and even Hollywood. But Volkswagen chief Heinrich Nordhof was less than pleased with Rometsch's success. At first, the coach builder procured the VW chassis straight from the manufacturer. But later, VW reserved that privilege for Rometsch's rival, Carmen. Rometsch was obliged to cannibalize new, fully assembled Beetles. And those who know the VW Beetle will have no trouble handling a Rometsch Bisco, reckons Christoph. But everything looks more stylish and luxurious. Better interiors than this were hardly conceivable in those days. And even in terms of acceleration, speed, and road holding, it was far superior to the Beetle. That came from the low aerodynamic body and lightweight construction. The driver's seat feels extremely low, but that's only because of the high sides. You have to crane your neck to see the street. The countryside is quite spectacular around the Trentino region of northern Italy. Alongside the smart convertible version, Rometsch made a coupe that's now quite rare. The craftsmanship was of the finest, all done by hand and the car weighed only 800 kilograms. All these hand-forged body sections are made of lightweight aluminum attached to a fine metal frame, much like Carrozzeria Turing's legendary Superleggera construction. From the visual standpoint, designer Johannes Bisco went for a compact ponton body with a delicately curved belt line. Some people nicknamed the car the banana, but banana isn't right for such an elegant car. And that's why, for the first time in automotive history, they decided to badge the entire name back to the rear. Model Bisco in fine chrome. Designer Johannes Bisco was not stingy with the chrome. The silvery lines highlight the extravagant yet purest design. The Bisco is actually a three-seater, with the rear seat mounted sideways behind the driver. 
The Rometsch Bisco was awarded the Golden Rose at the Geneva Motor Show two years running, 1954 and 1955. After that, it was advertised as the most beautiful and internationally acclaimed sports convertible. But the idea of it being a sports car shouldn't be taken too seriously. The generous engine compartment was occupied by a 1.1 liter VW Boxer with a paltry 25 horsepower. Although this particular model has Porsche power, a 1.5 liter 60 horsepower engine from a 356. That's more like it, says Christoph. With the Porsche engine, the Bisco can reach 145 kilometers per hour, but just 105 with the Beetle unit. Even so, thanks to its lightweight construction and streamlined body, the Bisco leaves a VW bug of the same period for dust. The Bisco was for individualists with deep pockets, says Christoph. It cost about twice as much as the VW Beetle at the time. There's a story that a German movie star wanted to buy the very first Bisco right at the motor show. But Friedrich Rometsch didn't yet have a list price and glanced over at the Porsche stand where the new 356 had been unveiled. It had a price tag of 10,000 Deutschmarks. So Bisco said 9,800 and the actor paid up. With the success of the luxury Beetle derivative, Volkswagen quickly made plans for a sports car of its own based on the Beetle and commissioned coach builder Carmen to build it. Starting in 1956, the head of Carmen's technical development team was none other than Johannes Bisco. Christoph observes that when VW rolled out the Carmen Ghia in 1955, sales of the Bisco slumped. That was to be expected since the Ghia was 1,500 Deutschmarks cheaper and bore VW's seal of quality. And so, after seven years in production, yielding 280 handmade special models, it was the end of the road for the Bisco. But it remains the first sporty luxury car on the VW Beetle platform and a clear milestone in automotive history. The Bisco was a design pioneer. Mercedes copied the eyebrows over the wheel wells on its legendary 1955 300 SL. And decades later, in 1998, Audi's TT recalled the style of the nearly 50 years older Rometsch. <laughs>